Contender Regime Boxing, checking back in with y'all, man. What's good? So, of course, we have Sebastian Fundora versus Carlos Ocampo. This fight was very competitive. It was surprisingly competitive, more competitive than I thought it would be. Um, Carlos Ocampo, of course, we know his claim to fame is going one round with Earl the True Spence Jr., um, Earl stopped him with a body shot in that in that round. Since then, though, Carlos Ocampo had been on a, what, 12 or 13 fight win streak. Of course, no notable opponents, but um, his wins have afforded him the opportunity to fight rising star Sebastian, the towering Inferno, Fundora, um, who just coming off of the biggest win in his career versus Erickson the Hammer Lubin. And um, I expected Fundora to look better in this fight. I'll be honest with you. I haven't gotten a decision yet. They're still, you know, showing the highlights from the fight. The 12th round literally just ended. But I expected a better performance from Fundora in this fight. Now, I want to give credit and kudos to Carlos Ocampo because he showed his toughness. He showed that dog. He showed the willingness to win. He showed that when he got another opportunity to fight on this level and on this stage, that he was going to put it all on the line. And that's exactly what he did. I thought he gave Sebastian Fondora a very competitive fight. He fought him smart. Kept it to, he kept it close to the chest. He didn't allow Fondora to stay at range. Let me see. I'm listening to the scores now. 119 to 109. That's tough. I agree that Sebastian Fundora won, but the uh the scorecards is crazy. 119 to 109. That's that's absolutely egregious. I ain't gonna lie to you. But look, so remember, I made the video. I said Sebat this fight with Carlos Ocampo. What does this do? What does this do for Sebastian Fundora? You know what I'm saying? He's coming out the biggest win in his career versus Erickson Lubin, a very formidable opponent. I thought that fight was should have been fight of the year. So you get in there after a fight like that. Let me see what he's saying on his post fight. Okay. Look, I said that. I said... What does this fight do for Sebastian Fundora? Does this make him better? After coming off of a fight versus a guy like Erickson Lubin, I expect you to trend upward. I expect you to get in there with somebody who is a championship level contender. Somebody who is a, a title eliminator. I expect you to raise the level of your game because if you're trying to aim for Jamel Charlo, who is the undisputed champion of 154, you need to be gearing up for that. You need to be fighting guys that get you prepared for that. Remember, I made the video. Go back and watch it. I asked y'all, what does this mean? How does this make Fundora better? Will this make him fight to the level of his competition? Will he use this as a stay busy fight just to get some rounds in? Will this make him, will, will this bring him down a notch? Because sometimes guys fight to the level of their competition, even if they fighting a guy that's lesser than them. They don't give their best performance. And that's what I thought I saw tonight. Sebastian Fundora didn't look like the, the sharp um, come forward fighter who throws punches in bunches, who leans on and uses leverage on guys and throws crisp, sharp power punches. I thought he looked more vulnerable than ever in this fight. He was getting hit with a whole lot of punches. I didn't think he showed his range that he should have showed. This should have, if you was going to take a fight like this versus Carlos Ocampo, I felt like you should have used your boxing ability. This should have been a fight where you use your jab and your range. He did come out early and try to use the jab, but he didn't establish no range. He allowed, he allowed Carlos Ocampo to stay close to his chest and fight within the distance that he wanted to fight at. I don't believe that Sebastian Fundora is ready for a Jamel Charlo. Now, I'll keep it 100. 
he is in line after Tim Zhu for a title shot. So he going to have to get ready unless he going to give up that title opportunity. And I don't see that happening just because of the dog that Sebastian Fandora is. I do believe that he is a dog and he willing to fight and he willing to take on all comers. But I'm talking about the maturation and the progression of him as a fighter. Was this fight beneficial to him? Did this fight actually expose him? Was this beneficial? I don't think it was beneficial. I don't think he used this fight the way that he was supposed to use this fight. If you're going to take on a guy like Carlos Ocampo, you go out there and you use this as an as a opportunity to get better. You use this as an opportunity to work on certain things in your game that you can use versus the upper echelon in a division like a Jamel Charlo, like a Tony Harrison. You know what I'm saying? Like a Erickson Lubin. You feel me? Like a Tim Zhu. Like a Brian Castano. I don't think that's what we saw tonight. I thought, and this was what I was afraid of. I thought Sebastian Fundora took a step back in this fight. And this is one of the things that I was afraid of with taking a matchup like this. When you come off of a win versus Erickson Lubin, you need to level that up if you're planning on fighting a Jamero Charlo within the next one or two fights. I just don't like what I saw tonight. He got the win, and rightfully so. Shout out to Sebastian Fondora because he did his thing. He went out there and did what he was supposed to do. But again, he went to war for 12 rounds with a guy that Earl Spence stopped in one round with a body shot. And y'all know that I compare Sebastian Fondora's style to Earl Spence. Not skill-wise. I never said that he was on the same level of skill as an Earl Spence. But stylistically, the way he comes forward, the way he throws punches and bunches, the way he gets stronger as the fight go on, he didn't really show a lot of that in this fight. And it shows you the difference in levels. He went to war with this guy, Ocampo. Now you get in there with Jamel Charlo and you fight like that, it's over with. Jamel Charlo, he don't, I don't think this man go 10 rounds with a Jamel Charlo. Fighting in a phone booth like that, with minimal defense and just relying on, you know, leaning on a motherfucker and getting leverage on your shots, just relying on that. I don't think he goes 10 rounds with a Jamel Charlo. I don't see him going 10 rounds. I think he needs some more work. I think he needs two or three more fights before he get in there with Jamel. But again, he in line after Tim Zhu to get a title shot. So we'll see. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. How did y'all feel about Sebastian Fundora versus Carlos Ocampo? Um, what did you think about Sebastian's performance? Do you think he's ready for Jamel Charlo next? Do you think he need a couple of fights? Y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Contender regime boxing. I'll holler at y'all boys, man.